listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. And on fourth Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio. 
iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646 478 0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page when Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also, be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy, but praise God. Jesus came to set the captives free. Here we are again on this wonderful Thursday afternoon ready to share the love of God. Amen. On declaring the finished work. This is your host, Reverend Pat Randall. We are continuing on our series, God in a Box. This is part eight. Let us go before the Father with prayers of thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you and we thank you and we glorify your name this day. We know that you have prepared this day for us. Everything that we need is within this day. So we give thanks. Thanks. We exalt your holy name. We know that the name of Jesus is above every name and every name must submit under the name of Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for loving us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that your tender mercies are new every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for this hour. We thank you that it is anointed and sanctified by your presence. Holy Spirit, breathe on this hour. Thanking you that no weapon formed against this broadcast shall prosper. That the word of God will go forth unhindered to prosper the place for which it is being sent. And we do give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The eye I first believed through me. Dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe 
as far and it's grace that will lead me on it is grace that will lead me on oh, oh. amazing grace will lead me home. Amen. Amazing grace will lead me home. This is not my home. I'm a pilgrim passing through this world on my way to a new world and new heavens. Hallelujah, as promised, as promised by our Lord and Savior, glory to God. Amen. So we have been on this God in a Box series now for eight weeks. Uh, The last three weeks, I have been looking at culture and how culture um, impacts our lives. It, it has a very strong influence on our lives. And as we grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit begins to expose more of the things that are influencing us out of this worldly culture that actually runs contrary to the culture of the kingdom of God. It runs contrary to the truth because in this world this world is filled with so much deception and a lot of this deception is not so quickly discerned there are very obvious forms of deception that we recognize very easily but then there are the subtle things and we know that our enemy the devil works with subtleties and if he can get us focusing on these uh obvious things like uh uh, not drinking and not wearing certain types of clothes not going to certain places not Um, hanging out with certain people, um, not cursing and not, you know, those kinds of obvious things. But the subtle things, those little foxes that are actually robbing us, those, those, those lies that need to be uncovered. Hallelujah. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are in the details of our lives and you are here to make us free because Jesus said it is the truth that will make us free. I believe that we are in a time, as I mentioned, I believe last week I talked a little bit about um, the shaking that I believe that. Uh, There's this great shaking that's going on in the heavens and in the earth. And it's shaking loose all those things that can be shaken. And what is remaining is that which is unshakable, which is the foundation that we have in God. Those things of the kingdom of God are the things that are unshakable. And in this shaking up amen because the body of christ we need to be awakened we have been in a slumber state but what is happening right now is being used to shake us awake glory to god those things those things that have been hindering our vision that they it's been blurring our vision and we haven't been able to see clearly the schemes of the enemy well this part of this shaking i believe is an unveiling jesus said he came to expose the works of the devil because the the devil comes to steal kill destroy 
but Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. So this, the works of the devil is being unveiled in this season and it, it appears to be increasing, but it has always been there. And I, I believe because I, I always believe that this, this knowledge of technology that we have now where we are able to be aware of things that happen almost within minutes or hours of it actually happening throughout the world, that is part that knowledge has it came from God and it has a purpose and what it is doing is it is unveiling the evil that has always been present that has been covered and we have not been that we have not been able to really look at this world clearly clearly the culture of this world, which and and culture, it just means uh, a cultivation of a of an environment, and man has cultivated this environment under the influence of the prince of the air, the the god of this world, the little G, Satan. And these cultural systems, um, I think I mentioned before that there's this teaching, um, that, and people are familiar with it, that's going through the body of Christ about uh, cultural mountains. And and some of these mountains are, you know, the government, education, um, our economic system, businesses, business, uh, the art religion, family life, those those are things that are cultivated to develop a certain culture in a particular region. Some countries are defined by their lack of education being provided to their people that, the, the, you know, there's no public schools there. There's no way for people to to go and and um attend school um or it if you can attend school it's only for the limited ones those who can afford to pay to attend school unlike here in this country where um education is um available to all people because of the public school system and we see how art uh defines um a culture and uh, we we see how even media, especially the United States, because I mean, media is uh, we're always being bombarded with media in some form, and we're being influenced by it, uh, whether we realize it or not. What I want you to understand about the culture of this world, because. The Lord has already told us that he has taken us out of the world. So we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We have been called into the kingdom of God. So we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But the culture of this world was cultivated by man out of the seed of from the knowledge of good and evil. We have been sowing seed from the wrong tree. This all began in the Garden of Eden when we partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And since that time, we have been sowing seed from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it has been reproducing after its kind. But, praise God, amen, praise God that Jesus Christ 
came into the earth to expose this. Not only to expose it, but to bring life and life more abundantly. He came to free us from the law of sin and death that entered the earth when man partook partook from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we can freely eat from the tree of life, which is Christ Jesus. He is the tree of life. Because of his perfect sacrifice, we're no longer at enmity with God. There is peace between man and God through our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. But we still have choice. Even though this has been made available to us, we have to choose it. We have to choose Christ Jesus. We have to choose him as Lord and Savior. We have to choose to receive his forgiveness. The forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I want to share um, the story about the Tower of Babel. Now, uh, for you saints who've been in the church for a while, you've heard this story is very familiar to you. And for those of you who have not... This is a story about man coming together in unity with a single vision to build something. But they have come together to build this independent of God. Okay, I'm going to start in verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. Let me stop here um, at this verse 4. Notice in the verse uh, 3 it says, Come, let us make bricks. Now, we know that the temple, the sanctuary of God was built by stone. Stone that was chiseled and then brought to the site and stacked and erected as a building. This stone was something that was there provided by God. But man came up with the idea of making bricks. Something that came out of his mind and his imagination. So rather than use stone, they used brick. Think about that. Okay, let's go on to... Uh, verse 4. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. Notice this this attitude, this spirit. Let us make a name for ourselves. Verse 5. Now before I move on to verse 5, obviously, 
their conscience was already convicting them because they make the statement, let us come, let us build this city, this tower, and make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the earth. Because they were no, they knew they were doing something apart from God, independent of God, and that there could be a consequence. So let us go ahead and build this, uh, unless we get separated from one another. Verse five, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. That's a story. Of man coming together without God, using the imagination that, because God created us to have imagination, He created us to be creative beings, but not to do it independently of Him, not to do it out of the knowledge of good and evil. And so the cultures of the world set out to be uh, developed through this humanistic approach to life. But God had a plan for us. But he always intervened. He is merciful. He always intervened because he knows that if he just leaves us to our own devices, if he leaves us to our own devices, who knows what we are capable of doing? This is men coming together in a, in a spirit of unity. But not the spirit of unity that comes from God. To build something out of that spirit of pride that comes from you know who. To make a name for themselves. And we are still moving in that. If you look at the culture of the world. We, st- we are still. Man is still wanting to make a name for himself. There's this pride. He wants to control. and He wants to have the power. We see that spirit still at work. In the culture of. Of this world. No matter what country. You go in. You will see this spirit. At work. Well. I'm going to move on now. To I just wanted to share that story. In fact there's one more thing. I wanted to share. Last week in sharing. uh, From the kingdom kingdom the kingdom of God's culture how it is how it runs contrary to the culture 
of the kingdom of darkness, that it is the opposite. Amen. Uh, I read a parable about the um, laborers in the vineyard where uh, this master sent out um, for laborers who are... um, to come into the vineyard to to lay to labor and they came in at different hours there were some who came at the very top of the hour to to labor and they agreed on uh, a certain compensation and then you've got those who came in at the very what they call the 11th hour so they were at like near the end of of, of that work day and they were being paid the same thing that the laborers at the who came in earlier and who had been laboring in the vineyard all day they got they got the exact same payment and they were disgruntled by that and as i was just going back through that parable the holy spirit spoke to me about the season that we are in. And we are just really at the tip of this season. But we are beginning to see an acceleration uh, that is happening because we are, we are moving toward this time when Christ is coming back. And so even now, uh, you can sense that how quickly the days go by. And so even now, a week may feel like a day and a month may feel like a week. And the years just seem to be to move so quickly. It it seems as if the clock on the earth has been um, wound up. And now it's move, moving faster. But let me get back to what I'm trying to um, uh, share that the Holy Spirit showed me uh, out of this parable that this season that we are in, that there will be those who come in at the 11th hour. We are used to the process. For some of us, we've been in this process for decades, walking through the kingdom, going through the process of conversion and the process of 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 actually believing and beginning to live out of the truth of our salvation and being discipled where we develop certain disciplines and we learn to be patient and in this 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 maturing uh begins to to take place amen in, in our in our lives and um but we are in a time that people will be entering the vineyard, which is the kingdom of God. Because we know in this parable, the master is is God, the father. And the vineyard is the kingdom of God. And so there will be those, because of the season that they are entering in, that what took us, 15, 20, 30 years, 40 years to arrive at this place where we are seeing things as as they are. We're seeing Jesus as he is. Getting to the place where we're dropping off that law, that legalism, seeing everything uh, through this knowledge of good and evil and breaking into uh, uh, this new creation that there will be those who are coming in at this 11th hour which is close to the time when Christ is coming back and what took us 20 years to arrive these people who are coming in amen will be transformed 
without having to go through 15 and 20 years of process. But we who have gone through this, the elders of the church, we who have gone through that process, having to drop off tradition and all the things that restrain us and bind us, we are not to be angry with God. We are not uh, to be envious of those who achieve this heightened revelation and being able to walk in the spirit almost effortlessly. That's because God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. So let us, let us embrace what God is doing in the kingdom of God. We who have labored for decades before those who are coming in now, remember that we have laid a groundwork and we are here to encourage and to celebrate what God is doing in this 11th hour season. Where things that used to take years will be received in days, weeks, and months. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take God out of the box. Your box. This box that you have created. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, for too long, we have tried to organize the move of God. Man has tried to organize the move of God and under the leadership of man and an organization without the Holy Spirit actually taking the lead. You know, we invite him to come in in our praising God and singing songs and in our prayers we invite him but he is always present and this is a season where we have to know that God doesn't come and go now he is abiding with us he is in us so we have to renew our minds and daily Daily renew our minds knowing that he is present every moment of the day. Every moment of the day. Every second. He is present. He is present. He has come and he has tabernacled within you. The spirit of God lives within you. Therefore, revival begins in you. Reformation begins in you. Don't look outside for revival. Don't look outside yourself for reformation. It's in you. Amen. Let me read 1 Corinthians 2.12. It says, Now we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. We have received the spirit from God. We are no longer receiving from the spirit of this world. But from the spirit of an almighty God. So that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Amen. By God. By God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this culture of the kingdom of God, we what we see at operation is that... 
it's not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, but we overcome evil with good. Overcoming evil with good. So when we see evil, our response is to do good. That is the only thing that will overcome it. And it seems, well, in our human reasoning, that this, how is this possible? How is this possible? When evil is done to me, that I am to do good. That is my response, to do good. But that's the culture of the kingdom, and that is the prosperity of the kingdom. Because once you begin to practice overcoming evil with good, you will see this life of prosperity prosperity overflowing in your life. That it really works. That it is really true. And anything other than that is the deception of this world. I mean, the deception of this world has always been there. I think I mentioned last week that you know you know we say and 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 I used to I used to be one of those who was of that mindset about the good old days and how when I was growing up things were better and the, you know we had community because that is a deception from the enemy to keep us from seeing the brokenness that is always present. And what it does is it keeps us from receiving the truth because what God is trying to tell us that he did not build this system and it's dysfunctional. It is dysfunctional. And it has always been dysfunctional. And that this is passing away. Giving way. To a new. Earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of creation is groaning and travailing for the birth of this new earth. Even our spirits groan inside because we know that we are to be delivered from this, even this physical body that came from the earth. Because now, through our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, we are going to have. A glorified body. A body that knows not nothing about sickness and, and, and deterioration and aging. We won't have to exercise faith to believe for, for healing. Because we won't need to be healing be, to be healed. Because we will be living in these glorified bodies that know absolutely nothing about sickness. It just will not exist. Glory to God. Just thinking about that. Thinking about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But while we are here in this broken world, we are exercising our faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. Also, let's look at um, when Jesus talked about the commandments, the law, you know, thou shall not kill, thou shall not commit adultery, those, those kinds of things. Um, 
well, not those kinds of things, but the, the Ten Commandments. But what he wanted us to see that in our current state, that state before resurrection of Christ, before his death, burial, and resurrection, man could not within himself actually fulfill this law. And he showed... Jesus came to show us the perfection of the law because he was saying, we think that we haven't committed adultery because we may not have participated in the physical act. But he says, if you are even thinking unclean thoughts about another person, lusting after them, and you're married, You've committed adultery. You've committed adultery. Because the law is the spirit of God, which is excellent, which is pure, which is why we needed Jesus Christ as that perfect sacrifice. So you may not be breaking the law on the outside, but you're breaking it on the inside when you are thinking, when you are allowing your mind to go off and to just do what it wants to do and not bring it under the power of the word of God. You may think because you haven't physically murdered someone that you're not a murderer, but you have murdered people through your thoughts, through the things that you speak against them. You, in God's sight, you are a murderer. So this is the opposite of the culture of the world. Because people think that they can uh, watch pornography or look at other women or whatever. And because they've never physically touched another woman, they feel that they are still loyal to their wives. Deception. Deception. Deception, a world that was created from the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me look at the hour. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Um, I, I'm always amazed at um, how how the time moves so quickly. I wanted to talk about love. I wanted to talk about love in the culture of the world and love in the culture of the kingdom of God because they are at odds also but maybe I'll pick I'll pick up on that next week we'll talk about love we'll look at it closely Uh, I think I'd like to spend a little bit more time because it says God is love and because God is love and we are created in God's image which means that we are love. So we're going to we're going to look a little bit. I think maybe I'll just uh next week I'll use that whole um uh, time with you to talk about love and and look at it and look how we've been influenced by the culture of this world to tell us what love is and how it should be expressed. Amen. Praise God. Father, I just thank you for this hour today. I I thank you for all that you are doing because there are no formulas in you. You want us to live and breathe with you. You want us to walk in fellowship. It is about walking by the Spirit. It is not about obeying a set of rules, but being able to worship in spirit and in truth. You want us to get outside of the box. 
you want us to move in that spirit of love, that love that disciplines us, that spirit of your power that disciplines us, that spirit of your sound mind that keeps us focused and leads and guides us and helps us in in decision-making while we are here in this broken world. I thank you, Father God, for the elevation in love. I thank you, Father God, that love never fails. I thank you that your love for us is an overcoming power in our lives, that we are able to, to withstand in this world all that comes against us by the power of your love in our lives. And right now, Lord, I'd like to focus on those who have not accepted you, who've not chosen. They have a choice. They can choose you. You have called them. But they have to choose you. They have to say yes to this calling. That they will see today just how greatly you love them. That this abundant life that you are offering is real. It's real. And it's beyond anything that can be described by this world's system. I thank you that they say yes and come home. Come home. Come into relationship with their father. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, oh, how we love you, Lord, we love you, yes, we love you, Lord, we love you, oh. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me today. Amen. I'm declaring the finished work. And hallelujah. Glory to God. He is good. God is good. And he is Showing us just how good he is. This, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. Amen. Comes from a God who changes not. Hallelujah. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Well, tomorrow night, Friday night, joy with Reverend Ray and friends at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and on uh, Sunday uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Bread Alive again with Reverend Ray and at the beginning of the year 2018 we've got a brand new broadcast um, that's going to be joining our line up hallelujah on when Christian speak talk radio uh, the broadcast is marriage takeover and the hosts are Reverend 
Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson, and they will be on the air every third Sunday at 7 p.m., and that is beginning in January 2018. So I'm excited about that. We're all excited about them joining uh, the When Christians Speak Talk radio family. So uh, be on the lookout, and we will continue to uh, get information out to you to just to remind you of this upcoming broadcast. So thank you for listening to this replay of God in a Box, Part 8, The Culture of the Kingdom, Glory to God, and And I just give thanks knowing that God is actually doing a new work. It is he that does this work, the the perfect work. He he he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith and he is faithful to complete everything concerning us and the work that he began in us he will perfectly complete it. Praise God, praise God. So just rest believers rest rest and trust he is faithful he's a promise keeper so until next week god bless you as especially as we enter into this um christmas season amen it's a a joyous time it's a time of gathering together with family and friends and remembering the birth of our lord and savior christ jesus So be blessed with the rest of your day. So this is Pastor Pat Randall signing off. Yes, you heard me right. Pastor Pat Randall. I finally embraced what God is um, calling me into. I've had people call me pastors. I'm I'm an ordained minister. um, But... Um, And I was hesitant even on taking that on and even moving in that title. And and it's not that I need a title, but what I'm saying, I'm saying yes to the the, um, position that God is calling me into. Amen. In the body of Christ. So God bless you. And just continue, just continue to to walk in, in, in the love of God. Amen. God bless you all.